Hello, everyone, and welcome to Let's Play Eternal Sonata, uh, the next LP as voted by, unless the, my channel becomes hideously popular, uh, most of my viewer base. This is a game about Frederick Francois Chopin on his deathbed in a world that he dreams. It's a, at times, whimsical adventure mixed with uh, some drama, some rage. Fred. And let's not view that. Let's just check the options here. Subtitles on, English voice acting. I've never listened to the Japanese one, but we're going to keep it on English just for the convenience. And I'll try not to talk over the cutscenes too, too much, but the subtitles are there in case I do. So, let's start. 18 and a half gigs, plenty of space. Let's go! I must do this. And it's for the person who means the most to me. My life is nothing compared to his. Doing this is easy if it's for him. Thank you, everyone. I know it didn't last very long, but really, this was the best time I've ever had in my life. If I blow him a kiss, I wonder, will it reach him up there? No, I guess it won't. Well, that was a change in tone. The rippling surface of flowing water transforms the soft light of the morning sun. The beams combine, becoming a spotlight that paints the stage. The flowers awaiting the curtain's rise display faces of bright red and brilliant yellow. They turn their ears to listen to the performance that is about to begin. Accompanied by the gentle rhythm of a babbling brook, the birds begin to sing. Meanwhile, a mischievous sea breeze causes a rustling amidst the leaves of the trees, disrupting the concert. It is a familiar scene, one that has unfolded every morning since the beginning of time. And even now, the daily overture continues, its delicate, perfect balance never faltering, never changing. In the midst of this joyous orchestration, at the center of the morning's discordant musical performance lies a small village nestled deep in the wood. The name of the village is Tenuto. It sits atop a hill which overlooks the coastline. In fact, the town is only about four miles from the sea. Tenuto is very lucky in this regard, for the town enjoys a wonderful cool breeze and a view that is nothing short of amazing. And then there are the flowers. They seem to blossom almost everywhere in the town. 
They paint the landscape with color as far as the eye can see. And they are the reason Tenuto is also known by another name, the Village of Flowers. There is a harbor town at the foot of a hill that can be seen from Tenuto. When night falls, the lights from the town shine like diamonds and open the hearts of those who gaze upon their illustrious splendor. Under normal circumstances, one might expect to find a bustling shopping district for tourists in a village as beautiful as this one. However, no such shops are to be found, not here. In fact, the village is quite calm, almost strangely quiet. It is a place that exudes a peaceful tranquility, a tranquility that further increases its allure, as well as its mystery. because of the moon. Because of the moon? That's right. The moon charms the water in the ocean with its beauty. And because the moon is so beautiful, the seawater just can't sit still. Is that true? Really? Really? Don't you feel your heart start fluttering inside of you when you look at the moon? I do! What about the puddle? Will it make waves when the moon comes out too? No, dear. There's not enough water. You need lots and lots of water, like the ocean, before it can make any real waves. Oh, I see. But that's weird. Why can't a little bit of water make waves too? The amount of water is the most important part of creating waves. That can be said about people as well. There are many things in this world that can charm people's hearts, just like the moon charms the sea. Things like wealth, vanity, status, image, and power. People who are drawn to these things create waves and the fear in their hearts makes the waves grow bigger and stronger. The more people there are, the bigger the waves can become. And as the number of people grows, the waves grow bigger and bigger. And that can lead to terrible conflicts. This is probably too hard for you to understand. I guess. But if something like that ever were to happen during your life, your only choice might be to jump into that sea. Because when you do, those big waves will calm down. It may be difficult at times, but if you try your best, you'll bring joy to the person who means the most to you. Really? Yes, though it's insulting to compare seawater stirred by the beauty of the moon to the ugly waves of human desire. <sighs> If 
feel like there's some bad blood right there. Ah, but France. In our world, 1849. He seems to have calmed down, hasn't he, Doctor? He doesn't look like he's in pain the way he did before. It seems as though he must be having a pleasant dream. Yes. Well, that would be nice. It would be even better if that means he's headed towards recovery. A full recovery. It's said that people can have the most peaceful dreams just before they pass on. What are you talking about? How can you say that? I apologize. Hopefully it's just an old wives' tale. Frederick. We'll be getting a few more scenes in the real world. Pay attention to the characters that you can see there because you never know. They might just show up here as well. Yeah, we're ahead a few years now. I guess I took longer than usual. Mom's probably worried about me. I'd better get home before it gets dark. And now we can play. What's over here? Tenuto vi Village. We are controlling Polka. Uh, I have played a decent chunk of this game. But that's way back when it came out. And I have not played it since, so I forget pretty much everything. But that said, this game is fantastically gorgeous. And that is one thing that I did not forget. No. Uh, the... Oh, there I am. I guess that's how far I've played. Uh, well... We'll just not save over that, just in case, right? Here is a... I forgot what they're called, actually. S something, 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 something empties. Uh, there are no random battles the in this game. The in the forest around here aren't really very strong, so I should be able to defeat them without too much trouble. But just to be safe, I'll go over the basics of how to fight again. There's no random battles in this game. You have to touch enemy symbols on the field in order to uh, engage a battle. Let's uh, view our tutorial, why not? Let's see. The turn order goes from fastest to slowest, right? Typical of a JRPG. It looks like it's my turn now. RPGs in general. I should try moving around a bit to start with. So how this works is we have control of our character. Until this action gauge runs out of time, I can move around to anywhere I'm I just going to talk over this. But the we only have a certain amount of time I'm actually doing something. per so if I don't turn know what to do next, in order to act. I can stop and think about it without losing my turn. But as Pope has just said, the only thing I can do, uh, I can as long as we're not too. moving, our, the this remaining time, time in our turn will not go down. The attack button. If we're attacking, time will go down, however. <laughs> you can see. Now I've got it! I'm starting to remember how to do this more and more! There's also one other thing about the action gauge. Every time one of my attacks hits an enemy, the action gauge goes up a little. Which means that the more I attack my enemies, the more extra time I'll get to keep on moving and fighting. Alright, I think maybe it's time to try attacking. That minuscule amount of time does add up, but only really if you start your turn attacking. <laughs> You can see, uh, I didn't already. get to finish that second combo, even though over. it supposedly adds I time. Just have to wait until it it's just not enough. Again. Oh, 
that's right. I almost forgot about that. When the next arrow appears overhead like this, it means that my turn will be coming up next. That way I have time to prepare, and I won't be surprised by it suddenly becoming my turn. Ah, oh, the very, very empty. That's okay, what they're called. I remember now. I, feel sorry I knew it was something guy, empty. But I guess I'd better finish him off. But since we're close now, we can just pretty much just mash A. And hopefully he dies. Wow, he did not die. I hit the B button. By pressing the block button, when an enemy attack is going to hit me, I can defend myself. Think of it like an action command in, like, right, uh, so Mario really RPG, Paper Mario, that sort of thing. Oh, he's only going to attack one time. Okay. And if I want to run away, I just have to press and hold down LB and RB at the same time when it's my turn. But I need to hold but down no one the buttons runs during in this my game. entire turn. No one runs so in I have RPGs. to watch for the next arrow. That way, I can start holding down LB and RB before my turn even starts. Or else, I might not be able to get away. I don't think I've ever run away in this game, so I actually have I no idea what that means. I think covers all the basics of fighting. Okay, I'm almost done. Oh, I, I suppose I couldn't kill the very, very empty because I was still in the tutorial, right? <laughs> Die, damn it! There you're dead. At the end of the battle, you get gold and XP, just like any standard RPG. Uh, there's more to combat than just that. We will cover how the battle systems uh, interact as we uh, get closer to doing them. However, I should say that sentence. I don't know. I'm a little bit tired. Well, okay, well, I can just go over here. X is going to be using our items. We're going to use RB to cycle through them. Floor power. Floor powder, I believe, is a potion. And uh, the Y button is going to be using our skills. Uh, down here's treasure chest. It's not 100% let's play. I should say up front. Uh, because it's, I'd say, mostly blind. Peach cookie. Yeah, okay, so Floral Powder increases HP by 50%, and this one just recovers 1,000 HP. 1,000 seems like a lot, but level 1 Polka is 900, so it's not that much. Man, that looks nice. I'm thinking about making thumbnails out of uh, imagery from each episode, so it's, if you see me just stopping and just staring at something for a while, that might be me making time to grab a snapshot for a thingy jigger thumbnail. Or maybe I'm just admiring the view. Oh, there's two of you. How dare you. I didn't get a chance to guard there. So, uh, Y is going to be using our skills. Right now we can heal with orange glow. But if I go into the darkness, you see it changes into something else. And that is one of the main gimmicks to battles in this game. How come we didn't change? Uh, don't mind me. Oh yes, every character has a certain amount of range. So you saw Polko was missing her second hit because I was just far away enough. But basically how this game works is when you're in shadow, you have different skills than if you had, or if you were in sunlight. Not items, what am I doing here? Uh, status. You see down here, there's Orange Glow and Shade Common. There's in the Light one and the Dark one. That's how we're going to differentiate between skills. And yes, there are ways to artificially make light or dark. Mostly you just have to pay attention to what's going on in the battle. Or the, the, the uh, terrain in the battle, I should say. I'm facing away, so I can't block here. Oh, I it. There you go. Orange glow. No one heal just because we have just barely enough time for it. Uh, the, the window for blocking in this game is a little tight. You almost got a level up. Uh, you learn new skills through leveling up, and you get new stats, or bonus stats rather. living in Retardando. Why won't any of them buy from me? 
And now... That's a cute little squirrel. Cool. I see. I guess you don't want to be touched by me either. Some of Tenuto's famous floral powder. It worked very well. Please give it a try. Floral powder? Hmm. I didn't know people still made that. What with the mineral powder we can get these days? Why would anyone need that stuff? Now, I don't mean to be rude, honey. But floral powder just isn't useful anymore. Hmm. I guess no one around here wants to buy it. Ow! Hey, what was that for? What's your problem? Uh, but I didn't do anything! Who do you think you're talking to? I, I huh? uh, 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 uh. Well, that escalated quickly. way to thank someone. Wow! Did you see that, Mom? She was glowing! Come back here right now! Never go near anyone that glows like that girl did. Do you understand me? But why? Because I said so, that's why. Now come on. She's no chosen one. That much we learned from that cutscene. People like that girl. Meaning that Polka is not unique in being able to use magic. Uh, now, which way to Tenuto? Is there anything secret here? No. Uh, also, in case you did not figure it out, literally everything in this game, except for enemies and, like, Frederick, are named after music. And I guess Frederick is technically named after music because, you know, he's a composer. But Polka, Retardando, Nudo. There's more. It never stops. Yo, very, very empty. He's also very, very empty of brains. For now, we're just mashing on A, but combat does get a little more tricky later on. Up. Level up. Any new skills? Nope. Uh, partially because of something called the party level. I can't show you what the other ones do yet, but basically this is the developer's way of uh, mixing battles up a little bit and making it more difficult on you as you get better. Right now we have infinite tactical time, which is the time before you actually start moving and activate your turn, and we have five seconds for our action gauge and it stops when we're not doing anything. Uh, our party levels up over the course of the story. It's not based on the character levels. It's purely based on story progress. And for the most part, I like the idea... Ooh, I got two turns in a row. But... Uh, once we get there, you'll see why it becomes a bit of a hassle rather than a cool thing. Also, you notice that even though I was standing in the sunshine, I my special changed into Shade Comet. It's because I was standing in the very, very empty shadow. 
So it's not just, like, tree shadows or whatever, it's your character shadows as well. Okay, let's see here. Oh, the city was great, you know. It was, it was fantastic. Don't even worry about it. Uh, but I'm going to try and keep the episodes to around about a half hour's length. Sometimes a little less, sometimes a little more, depending on how the story is going. But, you know, we did some battling. We just got to our first town. So I think we'll call it here. So, thank you for watching the very first episode of Let's Play Eternal Sonata. And, if you should be so gracious, share this video with a friend should you find yourself enjoying it. My name is Recky Wills, and I will see you all next time. Thanks for watching. Bye!